Hi folks, I'm Maith with Two Guys in a Ride. Rob and I are here today at the Intermark Car Show in Osseo, Minnesota, and we're here with Philip. Yep. And uh, and I, actually the car behind us belongs to his wife, Anne. So she is off camera, but we're gonna give her credit for it. Uh, and she nominated Philip to, to talk about it. So Philip, what, tell us uh, what Bentley this is right here. This is a three liter Bentley. Um, they, they basically make up to eight liters. Okay. Um, the three liter was their starting car. So basically they started with a three liter. Um, the, first, the first car I believe uh, Bentley sold, he didn't actually have finished. It was it had a wooden engine in it, but they sold it at the Earl's Court Motor Show. Oh, interesting. And it took them about two years after that to actually uh, make a, a running model. The first three liter Bentleys came out they didn't actually have front brakes. This one's a 1924 Bentley. Okay. And uh, by that stage, I think in 23, they started putting brakes on the front wheels. Okay. Uh, but the original Bent, uh, the, the original three liter only had rear wheel braking on it. So, <laughs> <laughs> and I can tell you, it's a challenge to stop them. Um, all the brakes well, on this heavy, car, yeah. well, they're all mechanical yeah. brakes as well. So there's mechanical linkage to all the, the the brakes. Okay. Perhaps if you want to bring the camera around, I can show you the, the return spring on the brake. Is this coil spring down here. That's actually the return spring. So they're in oh. a leather gator there. And there's basically a dumbbell inside the actual... Um, uh, brake shoes there. So the mechanical brake is actually rotating a dumbbell that actually pushes the one, uh, both brakes forward. Okay. So they actually grip. Um, this car's just got new wheels on it because the original, the wheels I had on this car when it, uh, we first got it were 18 inch wheels. And what happened back in the 60s, they really struggled to get tires for the, 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 the cars. And, uh, when Bentley, all their models came out originally with 21 inch wheels. Okay. And uh, this had 18 inch wheels on. And finally, there's a company in the UK now making replacement tires, wheels and, yeah. and tires. So we were able to get it back to an original specification. So when you look at the, the wheels on here, they're, they're nice and new. New? Yeah, yeah. They are new. Um, now, this car, it has a little bit of history because it belonged to your wife's father. father. And he was a racing driver most of his life. He was a founding member of the South African Sports Car Club, okay. but he raced Formula One as well. So uh, he had Denny Hume's World Championship Brabham okay. and a whole range. So he raced right up into the end of the sort of 60s. Um, the South African Grand Prix always used to be the last Grand Prix of the season. Okay. And so they'd sell off all their Formula Ones down in South okay. Africa. And so you end up with a, you know, a lot of good race or used to have a lot of good racing cars down there. But he just liked. Bentleys, and um, so he had a whole collection of unusual cars, you know, this and a four and a half liter, which my wife's sister still got in, okay. in Cape Town. So he bought um, this? He bought this from a, a, a dentist in Zimbabwe. Okay. And he was in living in Zimbabwe, and then it came via Zimbabwe to South Africa, from South Africa to here, and I, I we brought it in. Well, probably in about 2000 and okay. I don't know, five or something. Like okay. That, so you've had it. So like we've had it 15, 15, 15 years, 15, something like 17 that. 17 years here. I can't remember the exact and, date. And how much work have you done to restore it? Uh, virtually nothing except I had to do the paint and I've changed the wheels. And, okay. and you know, there is one major modification. The, the uh, fuel injections, or well, the fuel injection, the fuel system on this car originally would have had a thing called an auto vac, yep. which is a big glass vessel. Yep. And Bentley, I think, made a huge mistake. They always used to leave it just over the top of the, the, the uh, exhaust system. <laughs> uh -huh, and, and it was made of glass, which isn't the smartest move. But being in Africa, the temperature gets really hot yeah. and you wouldn't get any fuel. It just keep vaporizing. So that's not original. Okay. Um, the carburetors would originally been sloped. This, these carburetors, the person before my father-in-law used to race this car, 
and so he put the four and a half liter carb. So those are kind of the, two the, the major, the, okay. I, what I would call changes right. to the car. But, but they would have been changes that would have been made in Africa when they were racing them. Oh yeah, and, uh, and this car at one stage also did a spell with the British police force in, in, in Liverpool. It oh. was their skid pan car, so you know they they would run it around the skid pan, teach people how to drive a heavy car fast. Oh, in, interesting! On, on on you know wet slick track. Well, this this is this has got a lot of history. Yeah. Now, um, the it's a three liter engine. Yeah. Dual carbs. Yep. And it's twin magnetos. Okay. So the ignition system, there's eight spark plugs on a four cylinder engine. Interesting. So you have a magneto on this side, and there's another magneto on the far side. The drive to the camshaft is up through here, uh, through this front bevel gear across the top of the engine. And then there's a, a dynamo or a generator back in here. The, the engine is pretty advanced, it's four valves per cylinder. Okay. So, which, you know, from 1925 is pretty advanced uh, yeah. uh, motor. Um, it was built for racing. The 1924 exact same model of car as this won Le Mans 24-hour race, mainly because it was super reliable. Right. You know, people like Bugatti and everybody call this a fast racing truck, basically, because it, 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 it was super reliable. It got round. But by the time they finished back in, I think by 1928-9, these things were doing like 90 miles an hour around averaging, you know, around wow. the course. So they were, they were quick oh, cars. Quick car, no kidding. Um, I'd be terrified to drive this thing at that speed. And so, I was going to say, I, would, I don't think I would want to drive at that speed either. Well, the, the brakes aren't, you know, they're all mechanical, so you're never quite sure which wheel is going to stop first. <laughs> first, they'll give you a pause. Yeah, it gives you a little bit of excitement now and again. <laughs> now, I, I liked on the, on the front here, we were looking at the headlights, the, the, the Lucas yeah. Lights there, yeah. it's more, more smoke than lights. But yeah, and, and, the, and the other thing that probably needs to be adjusted, there's a solenoid that actually swivels the whole reflector, and I need to actually with know, the wheel. Uh, uh, no, it's no. Uh, just for the dip. You okay, know, to okay. Dip the yeah. lights. What I really need to do is to switch it so it because it, it's still set up for opposite sides. Side oh, you know, that's so, right. So my steering wheel right. here is yeah. because it's a, a UK right steering. I need to adjust that, that, but I haven't done it. Now, it's a job uh, to do. On these were also driving lights of some uh, type. Uh, no, they're just indicator lights. Oh, they are a, indicator yeah, lights. Yeah, little indicator. We were thinking lights. that wouldn't have be an indicator, but no, it's okay. just, a, just a tiny little. Indicator. And then what? What, what was That's the? To show you they're indicating. Okay, <laughs> the, 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 the little glowing red dot, you know, right. dot in the. It just lets you know. Yeah. If supposedly. you step on the gas really hard, does one of them light up? Uh, nothing like that. Okay, nothing. It's yeah. just strictly turn signals. No, okay. I, I actually have to light them actually and put. It on. <laughs> <laughs> There's something inside that's probably worth looking at. Yeah. If you, if you can look down, uh, perhaps I don't know how, whether your camera is going to be able to see this, but the accelerator pedal is actually in between. The brake is on the right. Oh yeah. The clutch is on the left, and the accelerator pedal is in uh, the little brass uh, pedal yeah. there. Uh, that makes it kind of challenging to drive because to get to the brake, you have to dip your foot underneath the steering column. You can't just slide your foot across and put your foot on the brake. You have to come down. Ah. And I think they it should have been called bent knee, not bent bent Lee. Bent okay. Lee. <laughs> <laughs> so so it, it's um, interesting. Let's the put placement it that way. is really interesting. Uh, yeah. And we've seen this on other er, earlier cars, but to put it right where they did, yep. yeah, yeah, and then and then to race it. Yeah, it's a it's a four speed box. Uh, so it's a standard H uh, change gear box on here. It's um, obviously I've got a mechanical throttle here. Um, a, a advanced and retired. You kind of need the mechanical throttle because if you go over a bumpy road, it can get a little bit ooh, 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 okay. you know, kind of sure. jumpy. So you kind of use that standard kind of configuration rev counter, um, uh, oil pressure gauge, which we typically run at 25 psi. You can regulate this thing. Okay. I mean, some people run them higher, but it never drops below 20. I run an SAE 40 engine oil in okay. this thing, you know, monograde. Um, uh, water temperature, it it rarely gets above about 130, uh, five somewhere really? around there, maximum 140. But it has no fan on this car. 
okay. um, ammeter, and then the outside dial actually turns your lights on. Uh, oh, interesting. You know, um, we, we have a, a switch over on the far side there, is our nearest thing to an indicator, which is right next to the clock there. Um, you just turn it right, okay, turn it right left. left. Um, and then the clock itself that is a mechanical clock, but the bevel on the outside is the wind up. For, it's the wind up for it. it is, sure. Uh, to actually uh, crank the, you know. And if you wind it up, about how many days does it run? Uh, probably about seven or eight days. Seven or eight days. So seven or eight I mean, days. it's typical to what wind up watches used to yep, be. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. And then these two switches are the two magneto switches. Okay. Uh, these are the two fuel pumps, which is not. As I say, it's not the original, right. but they obviously got a magneto yep. uh, cover and somebody modified it way back in the day. And that's where the two fuel. And then this is the uh, um, the exciter really for the dynamo. So I have to pull this out oh, yeah. to charge. Yeah. And it really, it runs a, a, a solenoid on the other side okay. that actually energizes the, uh, the dynamo. And then you get your charging. And then you can see whether it's charging on the ammeter here. So it's it's pretty basic. So now they what they, were, they weren't hop in and turn the key and go. And go. No, no, no. My key quite. is actually um, really an isolator. So I have a a, a big <laughs> mechanical key. If I if I have lost it, if I've lost it, it's going to be a challenge. Um, it's this here. So. I'm basically isolating the battery because it will discharge through the electrics. Sure. I'll just start the car for you. Need to put the mags on. Oh, wow. man. That, that is smooth. You're really smooth. And then I have quite the horn on here. Just be careful, it'll probably damage your microphone. I love it. Ooga. Boy, that is just smooth. Isn't it? Oh, it's it's a smooth engine. I'll switch the key off. Oh, man. Otherwise, I won't have a battery. Oh, and then the other thing I've replaced on this car is the uh, muffler, which is a little noisy. I just didn't get the, the holes quite small enough on the, <laughs> on the muffler box. So, so, so the key on the outside... Is, it connects you to the battery or disconnects it, you from the just battery? Dis it's just a disconnect to the battery. All right. That's all it is. So James May, if you're yeah. watching, yeah. remember that on this car, it's on that side. <laughs> all right. Oh, the fabric. Yeah, the, you know, walking up from a distance, I thought it was painted. No, and then, no it's and then actually it like, a fabric. And yeah. this is quite common on the Bentleys. There's multiple uh, different bodybuilders use this. Uh, this is a, a, a Le Mans-style body. Uh, I mean, Mulliner, Park Ward... Kroll. I mean, there were I were about ten different uh, okay. bodybuilders that did bodies for this this model of car. Um, basically, Bentley didn't make a complete car. They made a rolling right. chassis. So you got the radiator, which kind of limited the bodybuilder to fit the radiator. Yeah. You got the engine. You got the gearbox. You got the the fuel tank at the back and the the, the chassis. Okay. And that's really what the sum total of the the car was. And the coach so that, builders did the rest. And the coach builders. And it was an expensive car back in the day. I mean, this was a two and a half, three thousand dollar pound wow. car. So this. the time you, it was really a race car at the yeah. time. Um, you know, you can read up on the history of Bentley, but I mean, when Rolls Royce bought it, it was a kind of a bit of a tragedy to the to the brand as far as we're concerned <laughs> now coming yep. down here next to the horn you've got a, not only a step yeah, this, uh, this it's, is it's almost in the way of it this is your classic toolbox <laughs> oh now are there some original tools in there uh, as well? or is not, this this would have would have been what her father no, yeah had. i mean that that's maybe original okay. i doubt it but i mean uh, but the box is original oh yeah that is um, on the, the the other side is actually the battery, so it's just okay, a battery. Okay, so it cover. looks like it, but it's the battery. Yep. So, and then this was the actual door. Oh, you would just step right over this, right? I'm, not, I'm basically the driver steps over. There is a back seat, but it's full of tools. And no, stuff. that that's fine. But there yeah. would be, a, you know, you can see a handle on the yep, driver's same, door. Exact same, same thing on this yep. side from the inside. It, it, theoretically, it makes it okay. somewhat attractive. Now, there's a shell. 
container here. Uh, uh, just that? a spare fuel tank and more for image than actual spare practical is, use. <laughs> I was to say, what size is the fuel tank? Because that's the, not a lot of gas. The, no, the fuel tank's uh, back here. And you get about probably 12, 15 gallons okay. somewhere around there. All right. So I get it typically... Well, I do, I'm starting to look for a gas station after about 170 miles, okay. you know, 150, 170. That's pretty good, though. So, I, I mean, I've driven this down to Chicago. I've driven it to Milwaukee, to Des Moines. And when we lived in Africa, we'd drive it to 3,000 kilometer runs. Okay. So we used to do quite it, a lot. So the car, I mean... It, it, oh, it drives. It, it, I mean, it, it's, um, it's designed to, to run. To run. Yep. It is a tractor, really. Yeah. <laughs> so, but it keeps going, right? Oh, well, that's the thing. I mean, that was uh, super. Now, reliable. the uh, the the turn signals in the back would be add-ons. Uh, they're add-ons. Okay, so on. but uh, these would have been original. Uh, no, no. I mean, no, they're, even they're, those are add-ons. No, I mean, it was very much hand signals originally. Okay, you know, well, you know that okay. was one of these, and it's yep. one of those. So, or you know, get out of my way, hand signal. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, I, I see them back here, and they're on both sides, and they were on the front too. But these are the adjustable suspension shocks. And shocks. Yeah, they're basically a shock absorber, and what they are is discs of wood, friction discs. Okay. And the way you calibrate them is you take the whole um, the, the whole thing off the you know, there's two bolts on either arm. You t undo that, and you hang a 25-pound weight. And if it straightens out the the thing, you keep tightening it until it just lifts the weight without o opening. Okay. And that's how you set the shock absorbers. It, okay, so it's pretty basic. Yeah. You know, it's just literally hanging a weight on them, and if they open, then you 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 need to ha you yeah. know tighten it up a little yeah. more. So it's just a friction disc. And so that's the same the same thing in the front. Same thing in the front. They're boxwood on there. You know, it's just. Yeah. Two pieces of wood rubbing against each other. Yeah. Now, does this have uh, a working top? Under oh, yes. Here? We actually drove okay. here with the top up. Okay. So I put this on so that people can kind of right. see. Oh, no, absolutely. See in the car. But sometimes, more. yeah, this is it's yeah, just it's, good it's, to know it works. It looks like an Amish buggy, you know. I mean, okay. That kind does it of have car. plastic windows? There? It has a plastic oval window in the back of it. That's all. No side windows. The the It's amazing. When you're driving this car with the screen up as it is, I think that the amount of air that moves around the side of the vehicle, we rarely get wet inside. I mean, it's got no side panels or anything. Right. It just seems to disperse the water enough that okay. it, it keeps you dry. Um, the raindrops know it's effect. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you can see my stupid little windscreen wiper on there. <laughs> it's like, but that now, that was electric. Yep, that's an add-on, uh, I'm sure, is put on later. Okay. Because um, it would be a six-volt system. No, 12. It is, it's was always, it built yeah, as a 12? 12 yep. Really? Yeah. In okay. fact, actually, I'll lower this down and show you the uh, starter. And, and the. Okay, you want me to hold that? Or are you okay? I can manage this. Okay. Huh. That's fascinating. These must have been air vents. They are. They're just for the cockpit. Oh, I love the so, Bentley and the B. Yeah, so there's the starter motor. Okay. This is a a, a later model starter motor, okay. apparently. I, I don't know much of it, but they extended this on the back of the starter motor to stop bending the Bendix drive to the actual... Uh, okay. So somebody's added this later. And this bolt that goes in here it is effectively the thing that anchors the starter motor. I struggle to understand how this starter motor was held in here. And basically, uh, um, this is like a cotter pin. Yeah, that actually okay. sits on the side of the starter okay. motor and, just and anchors it. So you you can adjust the starter motor slightly backwards and forwards to align it up with a flywheel. Sure. Um, there's no filters on this car, and I have to say I'm embarrassed because I come from the filtration industry. Um, so it's just your filler cap, nothing on top. Uh, there's not one filter here. Um, water pumps at the front, um, and there's a little brass. You can probably just see it uh, with a T handle on the top. You, you know, periodically you tighten that, and it put, squeezes a little grease okay. down into the uh, water pump. So I do that, you know, about every second or third outing the for the bearing on the water pump. It takes a very sort of creamy, looks like a zinc-based yeah. grease in there and 
just have you ever had to refill that? Oh, I do it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. You just take the. Cap. But that's all it is. Is just you just twist yeah, the cap and, it and then it and then you effectively screwing in a needle, and that just puts a little squirt of grease. There's 64 grease nipples on the car, so each Whoa. each one of these these unions here, these hexagonal yep. unions, is effectively a grease nipple. So you, you can see them oh. all over. There's down on the steering linkage. Uh, the steering linkage is also a little funny. So, so what do they say at Jiffy Lube where you pull up there and say, hey, yeah, I, I need just a, gre a grease quick, job. <laughs> quick, quick lubrication job. Uh, but back in here on this steering arm here, um, back at this point here, there's a spring in there and there's spacers. Okay. And the spacers are old English pennies. Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> that's what they used that's to use. That's a spacer? Yeah, they're the old one-inch English pennies, the old heavy-duty English pennies. So back in behind here, you'll find that oh. they've got a whole bunch of packed-in <laughs> coins. You know, that's how they well, made Well, if you ever ran out of spaces. money on the side of the road there, you yeah. think well, about your steering. You know. There's a gazillion of those <laughs> things printed over the years. So it's kind of, it's got some unusual features. These fenders are all aluminum. Uh, all of this is aluminum. Interesting. Uh, so, so you know, most of the stuff on the top end of the car was aluminum, oh, aluminum. Yeah. which Man. you know must have added to the cost. Oh, I'm sure for yep. the time. Yep. But well, it's not particularly light. I mean, this oh, is close to two tons. This, uh, uh, yeah. Well, so it's a ton and a half. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yep. Oh, one other feature of the engine: you can't take the cylinder head off yeah. the engine. If you have to work on this car, you have to split the engine at the crankshaft and lift the whole lot up. Okay, you can get to the top end of the tappets, but you can do nothing really okay. without lifting the whole, whole thing up. And another kind of unusual feature is that the, the top of the cylinder head is conical, um, but there's a step. So if you ever take the, if you ever push a piston up too far up inside, yeah. the rings pop out and you have to smash the piston up to get it out of the, out of the <laughs> oh head no. of the engine. So it's, it's a little challenging <laughs> it's a little to take, just say the least. Yeah. Challenging right. to take apart. Uh, what's one of your, this is, I mean, the car has been in your family, your wife's family for, yep. for many, many years. It's been through a couple different continents. Yep. What's one of your favorite memories? Wow, it, it, it is, oh, driving around Africa in this thing is fantastic. You know, going through game parks and, and things, it's it, it's just, and, and the amount of people that want to know about the vehicle, you know, yes. I can't, I drove down to Chicago and I plan to get there in about six to seven hours, and it probably took me an extra hour just getting out of every gas station, because everybody, everybody wants everybody to wants ask to. you about the car, so yeah, it's just, it's a legacy thing. It's something I feel obliged Absolutely. to look after, uh, you know, and hopefully my, my son's interested in it. Hopefully he'll learn how to maintain Main it, it. Yeah. Um, and go on from there. <laughs> and do you adopt? No. <laughs> I don't even teach my wife how to drive it, so I still have some use. <laughs> well, Philip, man, thank you so much for sharing this beautiful Bentley with us and its story. No, thank you, and thanks for your interest. You know, we... We appreciate it. And as I say, it's a legacy. It's something that we feel honored to have, you know. Well, we're honored that you brought it to the show today. Oh, thank you. All right. Thanks for watching, folks.